This is a case of a transradial renal angiomyolipoma uh, embolization. This is a 74-year-old female who presented with abdominal pain. On her CAT scan, she was found to incidentally have a 6-centimeter right AML. Next slide. Again, these are a, two CT slices just showing the large AML within her right kidney. Next slide. So treatment options would include embolization with glue, particles, or onyx, which we're going to do today. Ablation has been performed both with uh, heat, cryo, and alcohol. And then surgical options including partial nephrectomy, nephrectomy, or enucleation. So a very similar setup. I'm a sort of, you know, used to old habits here. We have a six French slender sheath in the left wrist. Next image, please. Uh, again, this is a five French seroradial catheter coming down the descending aorta. Uh, image six, please. Here we were able to catheterize one of the renal arteries, and uh, the CT scan did not clearly delineate this, but it just so happens there are three renal arteries in this patient on the right side. So get a, get a good idea in your head, get a good flavor of what this lower pole renal artery looks like here. Next image, please. Here's the second renal artery. And now the last artery, image eight, please. The, the, the question really is, though, is that do you cover, with that artery, do you cover the entirety of the AML, or are you going to leave part of it untreated? I think you treat this artery, and you're done, and you follow the patient up with cross-sectional imaging, and you determine it. I don't see any dominant vascularity in any of the other two vessels, but I feel very comfortable treating, you know, certainly from this location where the microcatheter is, okay. almost every branch that you're seeing here. So we, are, we, did, we just loaded up a syringe of 18, uh, and it'll, it'll start to come out of the microcatheter in just a few seconds. Onyx is really applicable for sort of tumor embolizations or for, or for peripheral uh, embolizations. In my experience, in the more dilute form, which is the 18 form, uh, in this instance, you need to prepare the uh, microcatheter which DMSO, with DMSO, which is the solvent that the uh, polymer is loaded into, and that prevents polymerization of the agent within the microcatheter. Um, the... As you can see here, we were able to get really excellent distal penetration into the, um, into the tumor so far. And I, I would actually keep going. I think it's probably worthwhile to keep going. We can accept reflux. We can get deeper penetration into the uh, tumor here. Uh, uh, I think we can go almost all the way up to the top of the screen in, in terms of reflux here because I'm very happy with the distal penetration that we got. Yeah, I mean, the other point is when you're injecting onyx, you have to be patient. You, you sometimes inject weight. Um, even though you're not injecting, it still kind of flows forward. I, I call it looks like lava kind of flowing forward um, as it comes through the artery there. So, again, I think you guys should have a great technique here of just letting it sit going forward. I mean, it's a 1cc injection, right? I mean, you haven't even gotten through half of it at this point. That's correct. I, I, I don't think we've even used an entire cc yet. Yeah. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm almost ready to either pull out yeah, or kind of. to retract it and do another uh, injection and see where we're going. We selected this catheter in particular because it has the two marker bands. Um, and so I think uh, the great thing about this is that we know exactly where our tip and then where the proximal portion is. So you can base where you want to end your injection uh, with, with the tip location. I was going to ask about the end point, but we're actually pulling the microcatheter out now. And the technique, if you look at my hands here, it's a very slow tension. You don't want to pull too hard, but it's sort of like stuck in the mud. You just pull until you're actually out of that artery, and then you can pull back into your guide. And then I'm going to take this all the way out. So that was less than one cc, actually. So it, I, I thought it was very, very good use yeah, of a liquid embolic. That's using a guide. It's nice. What do you guys think? That looks good. As good as it can be, my friend. My catheter out over a wire, regardless of what I'm doing, I think that's just a good habit to get into. You don't have to fluoro, but it's good to have the wire out. I don't like the catheter, no matter what the catheter is really, to flick 
uh, to flick down or flick up into the vertebral. And so if you just see what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to put a tip of the wire out, and then I'm going to just pull my catheter out. Yep. Can we get a band, please? Uh, Aaron's going to show here is the patent hemostasis concept. What we want to show you guys is once Sorry, you sweetie. start to deflate the band and you see bleeding, the recommendation is to inject another two cc's, or one cc if you will. But we usually, usually inject two cc's back when you saw bleeding or this. when you stop at 10 cc's. That's something important to discuss as well. If you start to deflate okay. your band, we learned, I learned a lesson is, if you start to deflate and you go to 10 mLs and you didn't see any bleeding outside, it doesn't mean that it's not bleeding inside. I have the TR band on, I didn't inflate it yet. The pulse ox is still on the thumb. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put 15 cc's of air in, and I'm going to pull out the sheath. So, Aaron, what sheath did you guys use in that case? To say? This was a six French slender, so Slender. five French yeah. uh, out, outer diameter, essentially, and a six French guide. So, right now she has a weak pulse. One of the things that, that you can do before you actually take this down is you can compress the ulnar artery. And what I'm looking for on the monitor is, an, is a waveform, and I don't see a waveform. And so I can slowly deflate this with the ulnar compressed. David, you want to compress the ulnar? Sure. He's going to compress the ulnar as I deflate the band. And once we see the waveform, we know we have a patent radio artery. And bleeding. So that was the, that was the perfect amount of compression. And she's got a beautiful pulse. So sometimes you don't get blood return from the band, and that's the indication where you'd want to do the reverse bar oh, if you don't see the blood. Is that what you wanted to see, Marcello? So it, I'm going to talk for Marcello for a second, but I think what we tend to do is even if you see a little bit of bleeding, actually, is you put the air back in and then let it rest for a second or two and then actually take the air back out. You sort of train it a little bit. You know, feeling the, the radial pulse after you have the band on doesn't actually mean you have patent hemostasis because it's backfilling from the, uh, the ulnar. So what we tend to do, and, and I think I tried to show this morning, is we actually occlude the ulnar artery once we think we have patent hemostasis just to prove that the radial artery is still patent because you still st should still have a waveform uh, underneath. So, um, so that you should still have a, uh, what we call a radial waveform in that, in that thumb.